Welcome to Emmanuel and to our worship today. I'm Ken and the others taking part are Tina bringing the reading, Robin and Nina leading us in prayers and our music group leading us in our worship. And today we have a guest speaker, Sarah MacDonald Hayden, who is the new leader at Cheltenham Network Church. Thank you for coming today to be with us, Sarah, and we look forward to your talk. There are some notices right at the end, and uh, do stay to listen to them. There's one that's particularly important. It's the week after Pentecost, and we continue to open our lives to God. So let's have a prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, into whatever situation we are in today. Come with your power. Come with your love. Come with your recreative activity within us. Make this time special as we worship and praise together in Jesus' name. Amen. Treasure, baby. 
God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Hear the word of our Lord according to Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 26. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. You are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Emmanuel. It's lovely to be with you today. My name is Sarah Hayden and I am the new leader at Cheltenham Network Church and it's great to be with you this morning. I was appointed and began as uh, the leader at Cheltenham uh, Network Church at the beginning of March. Uh, so I had two Sundays in person at the church and then uh, since then we've been meeting as you have online. So we've been meeting on Zoom and doing various things like that. So it has been quite an introduction to uh, being in Cheltenham. But from what I can see from my window and the sort of small circumference of the area around, it seems very nice. I'm also a parishioner at the moment at Emmanuel. We're living um, just by uh, Cheltenham College um, down one of the close roads there. So uh, if you do see me, uh, do say hello, um, from a social distance, of course. I moved here with my husband, Ben, who uh, grew up here in Cheltenham, and my dog, Tia, who is at my feet. And in advance, I apologise if she decides to express her feelings as we think together about our passage today. I've been asked to reflect a little bit on Galatians 5, 16 to 25. And so as we do that, we're, we're thinking a little bit after Pentecost about the spirit. And this morning, I want us to reflect a bit on the question, what are we feeding ourselves? Now, I'm aware that might feel a bit like a dangerous question after this many weeks in lockdown. But as we consider what it means to live a life full of the spirit and full of the fruits of the spirit, it's good to consider what does it mean to be fed by the Spirit. Now, the book of Galatians is actually one of my favourite books of the Bible. It is a blueprint of what Christian freedom looks like. Throughout the first few chapters of Galatians, Paul has challenged the idea that there is anything that Christians can do to make themselves more acceptable to God. There is no level two Christianity. And he talks about this idea of grace, this idea there is nothing we can do to make ourselves more acceptable to God because Jesus has died for us. 
That means it doesn't matter who we are, what we've done, what our background has been, what our life has looked like, we are acceptable to God. And so after Paul has challenged the idea that religiosity or good behaviour or seeming a certain way makes you more acceptable to God, he still wants the Galatians to think about what their lives look like. Paul challenges the Galatians to consider what fruit they want to see in their lives. Now it's important I think as we look at this passage to consider a philosophical tradition that was around at the time. In other words, the kind of culture of Galatia. Within philosophy at the time, there was a understanding about wisdom, which was that if you pursued wisdom, if you pursued trying to be a clever and wise person, then that would mean that instinctively every decision you made was right. If you were clever, Every decision you make is going to be good and right. Now, I don't know if that sounds at all familiar, but I've certainly heard that kind of understanding and philosophical tradition still be the case today. The more informed we are, the more right instinctively our choices will be. Now, Paul, as he starts in verse 16, comes pretty strongly against that mentality. He says, I'll reread uh, 16 and 17. He says, walk, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. He is challenging the idea that a wise person needs no laws or guidance and will just instinctively figure out the right choices on their own. Instead, he encourages the Galatians to intentionally seek and pursue the ways of the spirit, not the ways of the flesh. And he draws a really clear distinction between those two choices. He's saying to the Galatians, you can't just follow your instincts. You can't just be a passive participant in your own life. You need to actively pursue this new way of living that following Jesus has opened up. He is encouraging them to ask, what fruit do I want to see in my life? In other words, I think he is introducing a principle about food, about feeding ourselves. Paul is saying, what you feed yourselves with will result in what fruit you see in your life. What are you feeding yourself with? I have recently, um, due slightly to getting married to someone who is mainly vegetarian, had to embrace vegetarianism a little bit more in my life, which has resulted in quite a serious obsession with Nigel Slater books. And one thing I've learned from uh, being vegetarian, but also just from a lifestyle, like kind of a lifetime of being a woman and therefore having to think about food all the time because we're kind of encouraged to do that quite a lot, is that what you feed yourself with, what you put in your body, will result a lot of the time in how you feel, whether that is good or bad. It's the same with coffee. A few days ago, I had a lot of coffee and the fruit of that was being very shaky and quite hyperactive, which I didn't need. We know with food and drink. What we feed ourselves with will result in the outcome of how we feel. Well, I think Paul, by using this analogy of fruit, is also suggesting that that is the case with our spiritual lives. In lockdown, both with our physical food and our spiritual food, it can be really easy to not consider what we are consuming. We might be consuming uh, more chocolate or junk food but we also might be consuming other things that may not be that healthy for us. I don't think I've checked the news as much in my life before as I have recently. And it's really easy to move from being someone who is actively um, an active participant in our lives to being someone who is a passive participant in our own lives, who kind of receive whatever is flung at us. And the reality is, and I think Paul comes really down really firmly on this because the reality is sometimes following our gut instincts 
isn't always the best idea. We know this um, from food. Sometimes following our uh, gut instincts about what we want to eat, our cravings, isn't always that healthy for us. And similarly, when we consider what it means to follow Jesus, to pursue the spirit, sometimes what our instincts are telling us to do are not the most healthy thing for us to be pursuing. Paul instead is encouraging the Galatians to feed themselves with the spirit so that they might see the fruits of the spirit in our lives. So how do we do that? How do we pursue the spirit? I think the first thing is, as I said um, earlier, to decide that that's what we want to do. To, just, to understand and to recognise the freedom that God gives us to choose whether we follow uh, the desires of the spirit or our instinctive desires of the flesh. It's about knowing that we have some control. I think, um, if anything, being in this lockdown situation can make us sometimes feel like we are very out of control. And yet the reality is there are areas of our, even if um, that is true to some degree, we do still manage to maintain control over our own lives. We can choose um, whether we begin our day listening and uh, scrolling uh, mindlessly through Twitter, or whether we start by engaging with the word of God, with the Bible or with prayer. We have choices as to the content we decide to um, allow into our lives or not, some uh, that might edify and other things that won't. As we consider what it is to have more time in our lives, it's a good opportunity, I think, to come back to God, to come back to the Spirit and ask, what uh, should I be using uh, this time for? How should I be pursuing the way of the Spirit? How should I be looking for God? I think in times of adaptation and change, The world is desperate for those fruits of the spirit, for patience, for kindness, for gentleness, for goodness, for faithfulness. And so choosing to pursue those things, choosing to ask the spirit to work in our lives is the good news and is a way of displaying the good news of Jesus to those around us. And so I would love us to just take a moment Um, I'm going to pray to consider that question. What are we feeding ourselves with? Where might it be that we have moved from being active and free and full of grace in our lives to feeling passive and powerless? Where is God inviting us to take up control again and to pursue again the work of the Spirit? What The great news of Galatians and the great news of the gospel is that it doesn't matter if it's not gone well for the last couple of months. It doesn't matter if we're feeling a bit out of control or our life is a bit chaotic because the grace of God means that every day we have a chance to start anew. Every day we have an opportunity to follow in the way of the spirit. Every day we have a chance to lay down the things of the flesh that might be destructive for us and for those around us. What are you feeding yourself with today? Let's pray. God, thank you that your gospel is good and that it has good things for us. In this time of um, change, transition and adaptation, I pray that you would help us to pursue the way of the spirit, the way of goodness and life, that we might see that fruit in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. And I pray that as we follow you, we would offer those fruits as gifts to those that we encounter. God, the world needs kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control probably more than ever. So we ask that your spirit would meet with us and would help us to display those. Amen. Lovely to be with you this Sunday. Bye. Thank you, Sarah, for your talk today. And we do look forward to working with you and CNC and other churches in Cheltenham in this rather unknown future scenario. 
Robert and Nina will be leading us in prayers in a moment and then our service will draw to a close as we sing of the amazing grace of God. God knows what we like but he still loves us, wants to be with us and wants to use us for his work in his kingdom. This is truly amazing grace. Our prayers today are going to follow acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving and supplication. Adoration. Lord God, we praise you that you are our Heavenly Father. We thank you for the gift of your Son Jesus, for his ultimate sacrifice for our sins and for sending your Holy Spirit so that we're never alone. We worship you, Lord God, as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who is everywhere and with each of the members of your church at the same time. Thank you that because Jesus died and rose again, the barrier that existed between us and you is no more and we can call on you as Abba, Father, and bring our prayers and concerns to you. Confession. Heavenly Father, we confess that in this time of social distancing and release from lockdown for some, that it has been easy to be angry and to blame others when things have gone wrong or when things do not work out as quickly or as well as we had hoped. We acknowledge that it is very easy for us to follow our own ideas and ambitions and that this could lead to discord or factions between us and other members of your church. Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for the continuing hard work of the key workers in our country. Thank you for what you've taught them and are continuing to teach them about COVID-19. Thank you that as you taught us in Ken's sermon last week, that your Holy Spirit provides new abilities and gifts. Please help us to recognise that these have come from you for a purpose. Help us to share them for the building up of your body, the church. Supplication. In this coming week, Please help us to accept your fruits of the Spirit and not to keep them to ourselves, but to share your love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control with others with whom we come into contact, either face to face or virtually. We now bring before you those who are unwell at this time, in particular, we name Marion, Joy and Felicia, and we ask that you will give those caring for them skill and empathy, and that they will know your peace in their hearts. There will now be a short time of silence for you to bring any others to God by name and to listen to God's voice. He is a loving Father and delights in his conversation with us.
taken part in our service today. Notices uh, for today include the fact of our Zoom prayer time on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock, our virtual coffee Sunday mornings at 11.30. Do contact Robin if you'd like an invitation uh, to one of those. And uh, also on our YouTube channel you'll see stuff about Creative Church, the material we send out to families in preparation for a Zoom tea that we have together. You might be interested to see what we get up to. But today I also have some news to share concerning Brian and Jackie and their future. The church wardens Janet, Becky and I have an announcement which we know will come as a bit of a surprise and a shock. But we hope at the same time that what we have to share can be seen as God's new opportunity for Brian and for others too. After six months of prayer and reflection with God and conversations with Bishop Robert as to the stage of his ministry, an opportunity has opened up for Brian to serve with the Bishop's permission to officiate at St John's Churchtown. This is great news for St John's, but obviously there will be disappointment here that Brian's ministry will no longer be in the South Cheltenham team to which he was formerly licensed. It will mean that others will benefit from Brian's gifts, which have been so much appreciated here at Emmanuel. Brian's ministry among people is greatly valued and will be greatly missed here. As we said in October, thank you, Brian, for the 11 years of faithful service that you gave to us in Emmanuel. We will always value and cherish your ministry, but we are excited for you in your new adventure. Although God has called Brian to St John's in Churchtown, Jackie feels that she wants to continue to worship with her church family here where they live. Please do hold them in your prayers at this time. I know they'll be happy to talk further with any who would like to be in touch with them. So as we wish them well and support them in this time of change, let's pray for God's blessing to be upon them and to be on us too into his future. Let's pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace, both now and for evermore. Amen. Thank you.